On the southern fringes of Australia's largest city, people are living in close proximity to the local wildlife. Snake handler Andrew Melrose is about to return a green tree snake to the bush. It's a beautiful colour, isn't it? And you see it just blends into this bush, into the, into the foliage and stuff we have here. Like you look at the leaves with the sun on it. He found this one in a local home. A winter trend that Jim and Carolyn Bland were surprised to learn of when builders renovated their roof. And uh, he said, we've got snakes up there. So, and, and they said, we're not going anywhere near them. Today, Andrew's checking whether the snakes are back under the tiles. Because of the aspect of the situation where they get the full north facing sun on this corner of the roof here, it's nice and warm. Jim had seen evidence of snakes on his property over the years, including skins belonging to the brown snake, responsible for the bulk of snake bite deaths in Australia. But until recently, they'd been confined to the garden, or so he thought. It didn't sort of twig to me that there might have been snakes living in the house or on the house, so I thought they were probably ones that came, came up in the bush. And um, looking for food. Andrew's just happy when people can empathise with the snake. Uh, I'd rather see the animal safe. It's not the, their fault they're there most of the time. It's usually the human's fault that they've got a house where they used to live. As urban development encroaches on prime forested land down Australia's east coast, it's the wildlife that often suffers. So when you live in a bush area, you expect to find wildlife and you just leave them alone and they leave you alone. A mantra snakes like this one seem happy to live by.